Hi there, my name is Vic Veer. I'm an ENT consultant surgeon working for the National Health Service in England. So today I want to tell you about balance, and in particular I want to tell you about the two balance tests that we often use as ENT surgeons to work out what problem you have with your ears. Before I go on to that, I'm going to talk about how the balance system works in relation to your ears, so you'll understand a little bit more of why we do these balance tests. Now, an awful lot of people know that there are balance centers in your ears and you've got one on each side. Now, what a lot of people don't realize is that your ears aren't the main source of balance in, for our bodies. Our eyesight is very important. Knowing exactly where we are, keeping our eyes open is very important. And also something called proprioception sensation in our legs and our arms. Proprioception is where we know exactly where our arms and legs are. There are nerves in our arms and legs that tell our brain where they are. So if I close my eyes, I know that my arms are going round and round because I've got little sensors in my arms and legs that tell me where I am in space. And I can know exactly, well, let's see if I can touch together. Yeah, even with my eyes closed, I can do that. And the way I can do that is by something called proprioception. So every time I move or sway to one side or the other, the muscles in my legs will tell me there's more strain on this side, make sure you balance to recorrect that problem. So that way the muscles, your visual cues, everything tells us where we are in space. Now the way I like to think that the balance system works in our ears is that you've got two balance systems and they push. This one pushes this way and this one pushes this way. And because it's an equal and opposite force, they're both pushing exactly the same so you can walk in a dead straight line. So the brain relies on each of these centers working equally and opposite each other, keeping you dead straight like this. Now, if you had an infection in one ear, for example, and the balance system is damaged, so if this side suddenly drops off, this side is going to carry on pushing because it doesn't know what the other side is doing, and you end up being pushed like that. And sometimes you can see that in people's eyes. When they have vertigo, which is what I'm talking about, this type of dizziness, vertigo, is what you'll see in their eyes that their eyes have been pushed across that way, and then their eyes flick back because they're trying to look ahead. At, I'm trying to look at the camera now, if I lost this ear, if some damage happened to this ear, and when that happens, you end up falling over to this side because this side is pushing against nothing. So that's why you fall over this way. So if you go back to this example, when this ear has died and this ear is pushing this way, what happens is when you look in their eyes, you'll see their eyes slowly drifting off to one side. And when the brain realizes that they're looking the wrong direction, you flip back again. And then you've got a slow phase of your eye movement and then a fast phase as you try and correct it. It's a lot quicker than that. It's something called nystagmus. And you often see this and if you look at people on a train and they're trying to read the sign when, they, when they're going past the station. You see their eyes flicking backwards and forwards like that. It looks almost identical to that. That's nystagmus. And it's the slow phase. The, that's the bad phase where this ear is pushing against nothing and your eyes are getting pushed across there. And then your brain kicks in and straightens you up again. And that movement makes you feel like the world is going round and round because the brain has no idea that the world isn't going round and round. It's just interpreting signals from the outside world. It doesn't know that there's been infection in this ear. All it knows is that there's no signals from here and lots of signals from here. Therefore, the world must be going round and round as far as it's concerned. But if you keep your eyes open, if you use your muscles, there's a disparity between what your ears are saying and what all the other balance systems are saying. And eventually your brain starts realizing that, oh, actually this isn't the case. And the world isn't really going round and round because I can see with my eyes it's not really happening. And so your brain slowly compensates for the problem. And what I mean by compensating is that it stops listening to this here because it's pushing this way and there's nothing going on this way. But then it slowly realizes that this isn't the case. I'm not going round and round. So by not listening to this, it straightens itself back up again and people start feeling better. So, for example, some people get something called labyrinthitis or a vestibular neuritis and they lose the uh, balance system one ear because of an infection. The well goes round and round for about three or four days, but slowly but surely, if you get up and about and you see the world isn't going round and round, the brain will slowly correct itself and put you back on track so you don't feel like you're going round and round again. Typically, that process can take weeks, but if you're not getting out and about, or if you're using drugs such as Stematil or something like that, which stops your brain from learning there's a difference in the two ears, then you'll end up being dizzy for a very long time. The best way to do it is to come off those drugs if you possibly can and try and let your brain realize that the world isn't going round and round. And the quicker you come off those drugs and the quicker you can get compensated, the quicker you'll start feeling better. So as promised, I'll talk about those two tests that we use as ENT surgeons. The first one's called the Romberg's test. And this is a way of us working out if you have a vestibular problem or a balance system problem to do with the ears. So we go back to that an example where both sides are pushing like this. 
you get labyrinthitis or vestibular neuritis, an infection on this ear, so this ear dies. This one is pushing like that. Now, with a little bit of time, you'll start compensating and straightening back up again. And if you see a doctor at that point, you're able to walk, but you're very, very dizzy. What he'll make you do is do a Romberg's test. You'll stand with your feet together, like in this video here. You'll put your arms out wide like this. And what he'll ask you to do is close your eyes. The reason why he's asking you to close your eyes is to get rid of that bit of your balance center. Your eyes are very good for balance. If you close your eyes, you no longer have any visual stimuli. You don't really know where the horizon is. And therefore, you're only relying on your proprioception in your legs and your ears, your balance system in your ears. So that's cut off a lot of the balance system that you have. And that's why some people, when they close their eyes, end up doing this. Because this side is pushing this way. This ear is not working. It can't push back. You haven't got your eyes because you just close them to keep you straightened up and keep the horizon level. And all you're doing is using your legs. So if you're falling over to this side, that's a positive Romberg's test. That means there's probably something going on in your ears. Now, I know the neurologists use that test for something else. They use it for test of proprioception, but this is how ENT surgeons use it. Now, some people may be slightly further along the path. It may be a week, two weeks, three weeks later, but the Romberg's test is relatively straight because the brain has stopped listening to the ears and is no longer relying on the ears and it's now just using the proprioception and visual stimuli. So if you, even if you close your eyes, you're still using your legs, you, your brain's not listening to your ears, and you end up doing this sort of thing, and you don't feel like you're really falling over to one side. Your brain has learned to not listen to your ears, and is now listening more to the legs and the eyes. So even when you close your eyes, your legs can take over and keep you balanced. So then you get a negative Romberg's test, but you still have a problem, but what you need is a slightly more sensitive test to try and pick up those people. So the next test is called an Unterberger test. I'm very sorry to all the Germans out there if I pronounce that incorrectly, but I've been practicing saying Unterberger a lot to try and get it right. So the Unterberger test is when you're putting your arms out straight like this, and now you're marching on the spot with your eyes closed. So this time you're closing your eyes, just like the Romberg's test, so you're getting rid of the visual stimuli. You can't see the horizon anymore. You're relying on your ears and you're relying on your proprioception. By marching on the spot, you're also getting rid of some of the information from your legs. So you're not using as much proprioception as possible. It's really stressing that sense as well. However, if you have a problem with your ears, for example, if this side went with an infection, this is pushing this way, you've compensated so you've straightened up. You can do a Romberg's, it's nice and straight. But when you do an Unterberger test, when you do that, with this side moving and your proprioception gone, your eyes gone, you end up going around in a circle off to one side. And you'll see that in this video here. So the Unterberger test is a sensitive way of picking up someone who has had a damage to one of their balance systems on one side, but they've recently compensated for that problem and have started correcting themselves. Now, an awful lot of people who've had an infection of one balance system never really get that function back again later. And there are an awful lot of people in this world who've had labyrinthitis and slowly but surely they straighten themselves up because they've come off their stemital, they've learned to cope, they've learned to straighten themselves back up again, and they can compensate, but they will find certain situations a little bit difficult. For example, if you, know, you wake up in the middle of the night, it's dark and you want to go to the toilet, your carpet is very lush and thick, and every time you step in, it's a bit squidgy. Those sorts of people who have lost a lot of the balance system in their ears will find that walk to the toilet rather difficult. And they may find themselves sliding along one wall on the corridor up to their toilet or veering off to one side and then getting stuck somewhere where they shouldn't be. And it all normally happens from one acute event, one terrible infection where they're stuck in bed, looking down in one direction, they're vomiting and they feel dreadful. And then after a few days, they can get up again and they can start walking around. Now, there are an awful lot of balance problems and vertigo problems in ENT surgery. This is just one of them. There are obviously some problems with these two tests. If you've got a painful hip or a painful knee or you can't step properly with the Unterberger test, you'll end up not putting so much weight on one of those legs that's painful and you may go around in circles because of that. So you can get a false positive test is what we call it. So hopefully now you'll understand why the ENT surgeons use these two tests to work out if you have a vestibular problem. And if you're not a doctor but you're just interested, this might help you with your relatives if you're trying to work out what's going on with them as well. So if you did find this video useful, please do subscribe because I'm trying to bring up more videos like it which will help you understand different parts of ENT. Thank you very much for watching.